I'm James Abbasnot, Lord Abbasnot. I used to be the MP for North East Hampshire when I came across Jo Hamilton because she was a constituent of mine and she was one of the sub postmasters, becoming, in fact, the lead public face of the sub postmasters uh, battle for justice and for, for compensation and for having the convictions quashed. In 2009, I first became involved. And then in 2015, I left the House of Commons and came into the House of Lords. And I've been one of those people who've been campaigning on behalf of the sub-postmasters ever since. I'm also chairman of the short-term risk select committee. I say it's short-term select committee rather than short-term risk that we're dealing with, uh, because it's a select committee that's looking into the issue of long-term and or catastrophic risks that, that threaten the country and indeed the world. So we're looking into that and we will have to report by the end of November of this year. So James, you've been campaigning on the issue of sub postmasters uh, who were affected by problems with the Horizon IT system for a number of years. People may know that a group of people were wrongly accused of theft, but could you tell us how it all started? There are two different things here. There's the way it all started and the way I got involved. The way it all started was, I think, back in 1999, when the post office was looking for a new for a new IT system, and they introduced the Horizon system. And there were real concerns at the time, in 1999, about whether it was uh, working well. Anyway, over a period of years, uh, it began to be introduced. And then it was imposed on these sub-postmasters by the post office with no option to not to have it. And prosecutions began to happen on the basis that money was going missing. Uh, the sub-postmasters involved insisted that they were not to blame. Uh, and the post office thought, I think genuinely, that the new accounting system had uncovered a set of uh, dishonest sub-postmasters that had previously not come to light. I first became involved in 2009 when a sub-postmaster uh, in a village in my constituency said that he had a problem and that somebody else in a neighbouring village also had a problem, and could I see them? And I met them in South Warnborough, which was Joe Hamilton's sub-post office. Uh, Joe Hamilton became the uh, lead face of the Justice for Sub-Postmasters Alliance. But what I discovered was first that the, the person who had contacted me then dropped out of contact with me, I think he left my constituency. Joe Hamilton had pleaded guilty to false accounting, having been threatened with the, the more serious allegation of theft. And in order not to go to prison, she pleaded guilty to false accounting. And she having pleaded guilty to false accounting, I and the other sub-postmaster having left my constituency. That was the end of the matter, so far as I was concerned. But in 2011, the whole issue began to arise again because a firm of solicitors in nearby to my constituency said that they had, I think it was 19 different allegations of something similar going wrong and I thought, this is too much of a coincidence. Uh, there's a huge number of these things. So I began to write round to MPs to ask whether they had experienced anything similar. And a lot of MPs had. So we got together and had a meeting 
with those MPs and those sub-postmasters early in 2012. And as a result of that, the whole campaign began to get going. So it was pressure by a group of MPs, such as yourself, that put pressure on the government to start an investigation into the well, situation? Yes. Initially, it put pressure on the post office um, because I got in touch with the chairman of the post office. I, I met the incoming chairman, Alice Perkins, uh, at a conference in Ditchley Park and said, we're, we're going to need to have a conversation about something that does seem to be going wrong. Alice Perkins said, let's have a couple of you in. She asked uh, Oliver Letwin and me in to the post office, where we met Paula Van Ols, uh, the chief executive, and Alice Perkins, to discuss the possibility that something was going seriously wrong. It seemed clear to Oliver and me that they were genuinely concerned to get to the bottom of it. They seemed to want to uh, help. Uh, Paula Van Els suggested that there should be the appointment of a forensic accountant firm to help out. And that was exactly the sort of response that Oliver and I and uh, back in the House of Commons, the other MPs were wanting, because if the post office was going to help us get through this with our constituents, then that was exactly what we needed to happen. And uh, in, in 2015, of course, you became a member of the House of Lords, um, and you've continued to campaign on this issue. Um, do you feel that you had to sort of change your approach in pushing for a resolution to this situation or you know how, how how did it change things if at all well becoming a member of the house of lords didn't change things it's uh, did, that didn't change things itself no uh, because what had happened between uh, the initial meeting with alice perkins and paul of Nels and oliver lepin and me and 2015 was that the post office in brief set up a mediation scheme but they also discovered, which we didn't know, that they were prosecuting people on the basis of false evidence. They discovered that uh, they knew that that evidence was false, and they didn't then tell the sub-postmasters, they didn't tell the MPs that that was going on, in fact, in 2015, they told a select committee that they had no reason to suppose that the convictions that they were obtaining were unsafe, whereas, in fact, they had been advised specifically of that by the forensic accountants and by a team of lawyers who were advising them. So they had misled us. But at that stage, the mediation scheme broke down then the Justice for Sub Postmasters Alliance took the post office to court and the whole matter became sub judice. So it wasn't something that was pursuable through the parliamentary process. So while, while I moved from the House of Commons to the House of Lords, there was a sense that the uh, campaign in Parliament was in abeyance. And it was only in 2019 that uh, the Justice for Sub Postmasters case was so spectacularly successful uh, as against the post office. Uh, and we could then begin to pursue it again through uh, par parliamentary means. We found a quote uh, from you of, in 2015. Uh, I think you said that in the House of Lords, you actually have to win the argument. And can I just ask you for some reflections on what you feel about the opportunities are in the House of Lords to campaign on issues such like this? Well, it's, it's very un unusual for someone, I think, to pursue a campaign both in the House of Commons and in, in the House of Lords. In the House of Lords, you have to win the argument. 
in the House of Commons, you have to win the majority. And yet, this is an unusual campaign in, in uh, that nobody in the House of Commons or in the House of Lords, apart from the ministers defending a government line, nobody has actually supported the government line on this. And so the government is going to have to make it very, very difficult for the House of Commons to hold a vote. If there were a vote in the House of Lords, then virtually nobody would support the government line, which is holding for the time being that the sub postmasters who brought the successful litigation against the post office should not be properly compensated. I mean, of course, they should be properly compensated, but the government feels protected by a government majority in the House of Commons, which I think is very shaky on this issue. And in the House of Lords, the government would lose any vote on not compensating the sub postmaster. So uh, the government is moving gradually and slowly towards uh, building up a scheme which would compensate everybody. And it hasn't been able to announce that scheme yet. But the, the reason it is doing so, I think, is because of the pressure on it, both in the House of Commons and in the House of Lords, which is proving uh, which is proving effective. But it's the government has got to do the right thing on this, and I think eventually it will. It's just taking so long. So this has been a campaign that you have pushed for as a member of Parliament for many years, if you, as you've said. Throughout that time, what has driven you to continue campaigning to continue? sort of the fight for this cause? It's something that I had no choice really about getting involved in because I was Joe Hamilton's Member of Parliament. And it, it became obvious to me very early on that she and other sub-postmasters were telling the truth. And if they were telling the truth, as I believe they were, then a monstrous injustice had been perpetrated by a government-owned organization, the post office. And there's only one thing you can do if you're an MP in such circumstances, and that is to fight for the monstrous injustice to be overturned. But this is something that has never happened before. Uh, a The number of injustices that have now been overturned by the Court of Appeal as a result of a referral by the Criminal Cases Review Commission. Uh, the previous largest number was 10. Well, now we are well into the 40s or 50s, and there are hundreds more to come. So this is uh, an extraordinary, it's never, it has never happened before. And what has driven me has been uh, a sense of monstrous injustice, which has got to be put right. There was a similar sort of campaign, which again I was involved in, in relation to the Chinook crash on the Mall of Kintar. Again, that involved my constituency because the Chinook helicopter fleet was based in uh, North East Hampshire when I was the MP. And that campaign took 16 years. Eventually, it did involve a select committee of the House of Lords, which uh, got the matter overturned. Um, but it takes a very long time. Maybe it's something that the House of Lords actually is particularly suited to, because um, it was a former defence uh, Minister Lord Chalfont, who suggested a select committee in the House of Lords, uh, which came to the right result. And then there was a special inquiry set up by the government in much the same way as is happening with the uh, with the Post Office Horizon scandal. Um, and you mentioned there a potential um, government compensation scheme and the many convictions that were quashed and, and others still being investigated. Uh, do you think 
that will be the end of this issue or is there still more that needs to be done, need to change? Well, in order for us to end this scandal, we have to have two things. We have to have compensation, full, proper compensation for everybody who has been so badly wronged. And we have to hold to account those people who perpetrated it. Neither has happened. And the holding to account of those people who perpetrated these dreadful, dreadful events is very important for two reasons. First, we need to ensure that it never happens again. And that will only happen if people who do it know that there are consequences for doing it. And second, those sub-postmasters who've been to prison, um, sadly, we can never give a sense of justice to the people who've committed suicide, but some people have been to prison, many have suffered bankruptcy, have seen their marriages break up. Some have seen their families break up because they were required by the post office to sack family members who the post office were accusing of being dishonest. They need a sense of justice too. And justice is very important. Justice is part of the psyche of the British people. And a sense of fairness can only be instilled if we hold those people to account. So we need two things to come out. First, full proper compensation, that hasn't happened. And second, a sense of holding to account and justice, and that hasn't happened. So until both of those things have happened, this matter won't be closed. And so did they actually ever get to the bottom of what went wrong? Well, A, not yet. B, it wasn't only the technology that went wrong. It was the contractual arrangement and the training and the offensive investigation and management that went wrong as well. But the technology did go wrong in that Fujitsu had a method of changing sub-postmasters' accounts without the sub-postmasters being aware of it. And we told the post office and the ministers in 2013 that this was happening. And they did nothing about it. Instead, what they did was that they, they tried to outspend the sub-postmasters in their litigation and they outspent them with the use of taxpayers' money. I think it is so atrocious in terms of government behaviour as well as post office behaviour, in, in terms of purely human behaviour, that it's not the sort of thing that one could ever let go.